In this lesson, we are going to create a very simple risk based application using Spring Boot in VS Code. In my VS Code, I have two extension packs installed. One is extension pack for Java and another is extension pack for Spring Boot. This is the one Spring Boot extension pack and extension pack for Java. This two I have installed and with the help of this extensions, now I'm going to create a simple risk based application using Spring Boot. I just click this particular icon which is for Spring Boot dashboard. I don't have anything right now. As a first step, we can go to command palette. You can type Ctrl Shift P or from view, I can directly select command palette and type Spring Initializer. Here, choose this option, create a Maven project. It would ask for the Spring Boot version. I'm taking the lowest one possible, selecting Java. Group ID, let me change a little bit, press enter. Artifact ID, I'm changing a little bit, pressing enter, keeping jar, Java version, I'm keeping it 17, but I'll check locally whether I have the correct setup or not. For dependency, I'm going to type web, selecting the spring web, don't need anything else right now, pressing enter to continue. I need to select a project location, selecting this folder so that the project gets generated into this folder. Click on this, generate into this folder, click on explorer, open the project, open folder, select folder. Basically, this is a Maven based project. I need to open some file so that the project activation starts. It has already started activating. Project is already activated now. Few things I want to check whether my JDK is properly set or not. Let me first open the pom.xml. In the pom.xml, if I scroll down, these are the starters added this spring boot starter web and starter test and the java version is mentioned as 17 as we have java 17 here i want to have vs code pointing to the correct jdk just to check the settings go to manage settings here we have user level settings and workspace level settings search with runtimes press enter this is the java configuration runtime edit in settings.json nothing is here in that case let me add the configuration press enter control space name i'm going to add java 17 comma enter control space path here i need to copy the path of my jdk 17 i have jdk 17 in this particular location copying this going back to vs code pasting the path but i need additional slash to escape so this is my user level setting i can make it default also control space default true so that this is by default true i need to add one comma here at the end saving this so we have added the user level setting to jdk 17 but we need to add it at the project level setting also close everything view command palette type java project and select this option java colon open project settings here we have two important things class path and compiler if i go to this jdk runtime i see this is added somehow could be due to the reason i just added it as default in your case if you see it already there fine or you have to add it this is okay for compiler also you have to check it whether it is 17 or not rest is fine now going back to the in case of java project or maven based project rather than using this section better we should use this java projects view if i expand this we have the entire structure which is more or less close to what we see in IntelliJ or eclipse expanding this this is the spring boot application class now i'm going to add a very simple controller which would be a rest controller inside the rest controller i would add two methods one would cater to a get request and another would serve for post request so right click new class so risk controller is created adding the risk controller annotation over here i want to add the default request mapping also so this is the request mapping i'm making it slash api meaning any request from this controller would be starting with slash api let me add a method which would cater to get request. If I invoke a request slash API slash greeting, it would send hello world. And adding this post one here, I have this mapping as slash echo. So whatever message or request body we would be sending, it would return you sent 
then the message that is sent over here. So that is the overall structure we have one simple controller with risk controller annotation request mapping this is optional we can keep it we can exclude it then one method for get request another method for post request let me run this particular class right click run job don't need the actuator now closing this application is started i can open the spring boot dashboard i have the view of the application over here rest controller the application and these are the standard mappings let me now access this methods from the browser first i am going to hit this localhost 8080 it would lead to this white level page error because we don't have any direct mapping over here now i would add slash api and then greeting this would give us hello world now for testing this post we cannot do it directly on browser i would take the help of a particular extension from vs code we can use postman also but for vs code i just want to utilize the available extensions going to extensions type rest if you select this rest client this is the one i'm going to install clicking on it now we have our extension installed let me close all this go to explorer for test purpose under this project root folder I'm going to create one .http file. Press enter, type get, and then I can copy this URL. Click on send request. We can see this response send over here. Similarly, we can create a request for post, sending the request for post. I can see the response you sent message spring boot is awesome so in this way we have validated both the get and the post request mapping from the spring boot application just to summarize we created a very simple spring boot application using the spring initializer from vs code we created a sample rest controller with two methods one with get mapping another with post then using one particular extension called rest client we validated the get request as well as the post request within the vs code and both are working as expected.